The film which you are about to see is an account of the three men who saved millions during one of the worst man-made disasters in history. For a lot of people, hearing the name Chernobyl evokes many powerful memories or thoughts, especially because it is a window into a nuclear apocalypse that many don't want to see, and it only happened 36 years ago. And in all those years, if you've been living under a rock and don't know the story, Essentially, on April 26, 1986, at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which is located near the city of Pripyat, which is on the border of Belarus and the Ukraine, inside the Ukraine, which was also a part of the USSR at the time, went nuclear during a nightly safety checks in the number 4 RBMK reactor. It went out of control during a low power test leading to an explosion and fire that demolished the reactor building. And unfortunately, as a result of this, the disaster released over 400 times more radiation to the atmosphere than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, which in return contaminated millions of surrounding acres, killed millions of peoples in the surrounding years, and almost permanently deforming all fauna in the surrounding areas. Though, unless you've been watching the recent miniseries about Chernobyl on HBO, you might not know the true scale of the destruction that could have been unleashed if it were not for three brave divers. Though, surprisingly enough, there are two versions of this story, a mythical one and a true version one. Let's dive into both of them. On May 4th, 1986, only about eight days after the disaster, mechanical engineer Alexei Anenko, senior engineer Velary Bespalov, and the chef supervisor Boris Baranov all volunteered to undertake a mission that honestly should have killed them in the worst imaginable way. What was the mission, you ask? Well, you see, on the day of the disaster, firefighters had pumped massive amounts of water into the reactor in order to control the blazing fire. Though, upon doing this, they flooded the plant's basement with radioactive water. There was only one thing wrong, though. The basement also contained the valves that, in turn, would drain the spent nuclear fuel pool that sat beneath the reactor, which, during normal operations, acts as a coolant for the radioactive element. And unfortunately, a couple of days after the meltdown, it was discovered that molten nuclear material was melting through the concrete floor and starting to make its way to the pools below. And here is where things get apocalyptic. If the lava-like nuclear material even made a little contact with the water below, it would have caused a radiation-contaminated steam explosion that would have destroyed the entire plant along with the three remaining reactors, which would have almost certainly killed millions with the force of three to five megatons leaving all of Europe uninhabitable from the nuclear fallout for hundreds of thousands of years. So to say this diving mission was important would be the understatement of the entire history of Earth. Donned in only wetsuits and a flashlight, the three men dove into the darkness of the basement and swam through the radioactive water in almost total darkness. While they were swimming, their flashlights would die, presumably from the water damage, though even through all odds, they still miraculously were able to find the valves and save all of Europe from total destruction. They were then able to escape, but of course, they swam in radioactive water, so unfortunately, all three men would be showing acute radiation syndrome directly after resurfacing, and eventually, they would succumb to radiation poisoning a short while later and would be buried in lead coffins. Now, this is a very heroic story, but it's a little off, so let's see what actually happened. All three men were actually ordered to go into the basement by the government and actually had no choice in the matter. Though they were actually outfitted in only a wetsuit and flashlight, the dive itself was less dramatic. Although, when they were ready to dive in, the water was still radioactive, it was only knee high this time. As they were actually pretty lucky that the firefighters were able to pump out most of the water a few days prior. But when they went down, it was actually worse than the myth, because when they descended into the basement, they found themselves in tunnels filled with top to bottom of hundreds of different valves and pipes of all shapes and sizes. So in reality, finding the specific valves they were looking for was going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. Though miraculously, they were able to find the valves by finding the pipes that release the water to the reactor. They followed the pipes and turned the valves as soon as they were able to. They then knew that they had the right valves whenever they turned it and they heard a huge rush of water. They then celebrated together. Then as they exited the basement, they were all held as heroes. They also never suffered from acute radiation syndrome, as the myth says. In fact, two of the men are still working in the radiation industry to this day. 
Unfortunately though, Boris Baranov would pass away in 2005 of a heart attack. All in all, this is probably one of the most underrated stories in history. As again, if it weren't for these men, everyone who's living in Europe right now would either be living in another continent or would not be alive at all. Let me know in the comments what would you have done if forced to do a mission of this magnitude. And again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.